Hello everyone. So uh, I'll be taking a series of lecture on basics of ECG and this is the first lecture in that series. So we'll start with electrical activity of the heart. So heart is an organ and it contains two type of tissues. One is cardiac conduction system and another one is cardiac muscles. Okay. So the function of cardiac conduction system is to conduct the electrical impulse from one part to another while cardiac muscles contract and pushes the blood. So in cardiac conduction system, we have SA node, which is the pacemaker. Then we have internodal atrial pathways, which conduct the impulse from SA node to AV node. Then we have AV node, bundle of his, bundle branches, which are left bundle branch and right bundle branch. Left bundle branch is further divided into left anterior fascicle and left posterior fascicle. Okay. Then we have this fastest conducting Purkinje system. Okay. Uh, the conduction speed in different cardiac tissue is different. So the SA node and AV node are slowest with speed of 0 0.05 meter per second. Well, the Purkinje system is fastest with a speed of 4 meter per second. Since AV node is slowest, that's why we have AV nodal delay in the form of PR segment. Ventricular muscle system is also slow. That's why whenever there is a bundle branch block or something like that, and ventricular muscle have to conduct the impulses, then there is a formation of broad QRS. Okay. Now, what is ECG? So basically, ECG is the record of the fluctuations in potential during a cardiac tissue. Since our body contains fluids which are good conductor, so the fluctuation in potential can be easily recorded. Okay. Now, we have different type of leads in an ECG. So basically, our heart is a 3D structure. Okay. So we have limb leads which records the electrical potential in an XY plane. While chest leads records the action potential in a YZ plane. Okay. So in this way, we will be able to see the heart from different angle and uh, try to guess about the 3D structure and the 3D deformity in the heart. Okay. So, uh, Leads can also be divided as unipolar leads or bipolar leads. Unipolar leads have only one active electrode and the indifferent electrode is placed at a zero potential. While in bipolar leads, we have two active electrodes. electrodes. One is a positive electrode and one is a negative electrode. So basically the rule is the depolarization moving towards the active electrode produces a positive deflection while depolarization moving in the direction opposite will produce a negative deflection. So suppose this is lead one having a negative electrode in right upper limb and a positive electrode in left upper limb. So any depolarization moving in this direction will produce a positive deflection and any depolarization moving away from this will produce a negative deflection. Okay. Now limb leads. So uh, initially when the ECG was developed, we thought of producing three leads. Okay, So these were the initial three leads. This is lead one. This is lead two. This is lead three. Lead one have a negative electrode in right upper limb and a positive electrode in left upper limb. While lead two have a negative electrode in right upper limb and a positive electrode in left lower limb. Lead three will be having a negative electrode in left upper limb and a positive electrode in left lower limb. These were the initial three leads. Then we thought that we can make more leads so that we can see the heart from different angles, from different perspectives, so as to find the more pathologies. Okay. Uh, so th these were the initial three leads. And all these three leads, one, two, and three, these are bipolar leads. Okay. Then what we have done is, we have taken a midpoint of lead 1 and placed a 
positive electrode here. Then we have taken a midpoint of lead 2 and placed a positive electrode here. Similarly, midpoint of lead 3 and a positive electrode. Here. Okay. So these three new leads that we have made, all these are unipolar leads. Since this lead which is perpendicular to lead 1 is pointing in the direction of foot. So this is lead ABF. Okay. This lead perpendicular to lead 2 is in the direction of left upper limb. So this is ABL. And this lead perpendicular to lead 3 is in the direction of right upper limb. So this is lead ABR. So these are the 6 limb leads out of which lead 1, 2 and 3 are bipolar. Lead AVL, lead AVF, and AVR are unipolar. Then we have chest leads which are viewing the heart from the bicep plane, in which we have lead B1, which is placed in the right parasternal area, fourth intercostal space. Then we have lead V2. Suppose this is a sternum. This is the right side of the body, this is left side of the body. So here we have lead V1, here we have lead V2 in left parasternal space, fourth intercostal space. Lead V3 is between V2 and V4. Lead V4 is left fifth intercostal space at mid clavicular line somewhere around here. This is V4, this is V3. Then we have lead V5 in left fifth intercostal space at anterior axillary line. And lead V6 in left fifth intercostal space, mid axillary line. So these are leads V1, V2, V3, V4, V5. These are the chest leads which are viewing the heart in a YZ plane. Also, these leads are also unipolar. So in a normal 12 lead ECG, we have six limb leads, six chest leads. Out of six limb leads, three are unipolar. Three are bipolar. While in six chest leads, all are unipolar. Okay. Now, in ECG, uh, the basic waves are a P wave, which is because of the atrial depolarization. We have a QRS complex, which is because of ventricular depolarization. We have a T wave, which is because of ventricular repolarization, and a U wave which have different mechanisms. One of the accepted mechanism is it is due to ventricular myocytes with long action potentials. Now, lead 2 is the most physiological lead because it points in the direction of the heart. So suppose this is our heart. It is placed somewhat like this. Slightly tilted towards the left. So, uh, Again, lead 2 is like this only. With the negative electrode in right upper limb, the positive electrode in left lower limb. So lead 2 is uh, directly in the axis of the heart. So lead 2 is the best lead to look for arrhythmias or rhythm. Okay. So we'll try to draw different waves in lead 2. So suppose this is the heart. This is right atrium. This is left atrium. This is right ventricle. This is left ventricle. Okay. So, the depolarization starts from here, from right atria. Go towards the AV node. And then we have an AV nodal delay. There is this bundle of his, which divides into right bundle branch, left bundle branch, and left bundle branch further divides into left anterior and left posterior fascicle. So depolarization starts from RA and go towards LA and also goes towards AV node. Okay. 
so we have this is our lead to so the first wave is because of atrial depolarization Since the uh, depolarization of atria is from above downward and lead 2 is also pointing above downward, so we have a positive wave. So this is our P wave, which is because of the atrial depolarization. Also the first half of this P wave is because of RA depolarization, because RA depolarizes first, and the second half is because of LA depolarization. Okay. Then we have this PR segment, which is because of AV nodal delay. Now, uh, when the impulses goes to the bundle of his and bundle branches, first of all, there is septal depolarization. Okay. So, so the first part to get depolarized in ventricle is mid part of interventricular septum. And this de depolarization occurs because of left bundle branch. Okay. So left bundle branch fires from here and depolarizes the mid part of interventricular septum. Okay. As we can see that this depolarization is from below upwards and towards the right. So we will get a negative wave in lead two and this is known as a Q wave. Okay. After that, there is a major ventricular musculature depolarization leading to the production of R wave. Okay, so this is a R wave. Then in the last, the base of the heart depolarizes. Okay, so base of the ventricle depolarizes in the end, leading to a production of small negative S waves because the direction is again from below upwards. Okay. After that, we have ST segment, which again represents ventricular repolarization and the T wave, which is again because of ventricular repolarization. So this is how a normal ECG looks in lead two. So normal PR interval, PR interval includes PR segment plus P wave both. So the normal PR interval is 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. Yeah. And the QRS duration is 0 0.10 seconds. So this is how a ECG sheet looks like. The ECG sheet have big squares and small squares. Okay. So this is a big square and this is a small square. Okay. Each big square is 5 mm into 5 mm and small square is 1 mm into 1 mm. Okay. The ECG paper moves with a speed of 300 big squares per minute. We can say it as 1500 big squares per minute. Sorry, small squares. Or we can say it as 25 mm per second. Okay, so since ECG paper is moving with a speed of 300 big squares per minute, so one big square is equal to 0 0.2 seconds. Okay, and one small square is equal to 0 0.2 by 5, that is 0 0.04 seconds. Clear? So the ECG sheet has a speed of 300 large squares per minute. And the time duration of one big square is 0.2 second and the time duration of one small square is 0 0.04 seconds. Clear? Now, interpretation of ECG. So whenever we interpret an ECG, we try to follow this rule and we'll see these things sequence-wise. So we'll never miss anything in an ECG. Okay? We'll start with rate, then we'll look for rhythm, then we'll look for axis, then we'll look for P wave, PR segment or interval, QRS complex, ST segment, QT interval, T wave, U waves, and the progression of R wave in chest. Okay. So these things have to be looked. First of all, we'll look at read. 
So as we all know that bradycardia is heart rate less than 60 and tachycardia is heart rate more than 100. So how to look for rate is one, as we know that ECG paper is moving with a speed of 300 big squares per minute. Okay? And one cardiac cycle is completed from one QRS to another QRS. So we'll look for a RR interval. And heart rate can be calculated as 300 by RR interval in terms of big squares. Okay. Or it can also be calculated as 1500 by RR interval in terms of small square. Okay. So suppose this is an ECG. Okay. This is one R wave, this is another R wave. If we'll calculate big squares, one, two, three, four, almost four big squares. So the heart rate is 300 by four, 75 per minute. Okay. So this is how we'll calculate the heart rate from an ECG. Then another thing to look for is rhythm. Okay. So rhythm can be regular or irregular. In irregular, we have regularly, irregular, or we can have irregularly. Okay. So how to look for rhythm is, we'll look at RR interval. And if the RR interval in all the complexes is the same, then it is a regular. And if RR interval is different in different complexes, then it is an irregular. Suppose this is one QRS, second, third, fourth, fifth. So RR is different in different complexes. So it is an irregular rhythm. Okay. So as we can see in this ECG, that this is one RR interval, this is another, this is another. So all RR interval is approximately four big squares. So heart rate is 300 by four, that is 75. The rhythm is regular, okay. Similarly, we can see in this ECG that this RR interval, 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 all are different. Okay? So this is an irregularly irregular rhythm. As this is a ECG of atrial fibrillation. We'll discuss in further slides. But another important thing to look is that irregularly irregular rhythm are seen in three conditions. One is atrial fibrillation. Another one is atrial flutter with variable AV block. And third condition is MAT, that is multifocal atrial tachycardia. Okay. So thank you very much. We'll discuss upon further points in further classes. Thank you.